Um, I learned early on that I was mistaken when I thought I was an entrepreneur. I learned about 15 years into my career, I thought I was an entrepreneur. I love building businesses, right? I love getting into it. Um, but I learned uh, pretty early on when I started with, uh, with Garden of Life, I'm not the entrepreneur. I'm the guy the entrepreneur hires. Okay. There's a difference, and I embrace that. I, I call myself an operator. I'm a leader. I'm an operator. I'm a business builder. I'm not an entrepreneur. I respect the heck out of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are typically brilliant. Uh, I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and two very, very closely. I'm working with one now. They could tell you sales for a specific SKU in June of two years ago. And then in their head, calculate the gross margin or the growth year over year, month over month in their head. And the reason is entrepreneurs typically make every decision in a company, every single one, good entrepreneurs, especially startups, pure startups. You make every decision. When do we pay the bills? If we don't have enough money, what do we pay? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it starts to, they have to be brilliant. Entrepreneurs are brilliant. They're risk takers. They put it all on the line. First thing I ask, I meet a lot of people who have good business plans. And the first thing I ask is, uh, is this your second or third mortgage on your home? Uh, you know, what's your, how many credit cards you got in your wallet? And how many are, are, are maxed out? A true entrepreneur is putting it all in, all in. Mortgages, debt, I mean, up to their eyeballs. They are bought in hardcore. I meet a lot of people with great ideas, but if they're not all in, they're not entrepreneurs. It's seriously, and if you're looking for money, uh, from guys like me, angel investors even, uh, first thing you're gonna ask is, how much you got in? How many friends and family have you got in? It takes a lot to ask your parents or to ask your uncle for money. It takes a lot, it takes a lot. And if you're not willing to have that conversation, I would, I would ask you to consider, reconsider whether you're an entrepreneur. You don't have to be an entrepreneur, it's glamorous. You know, Michael Dell, wow, huge glamour. He didn't build that company. He got to a certain point, he hired Robert Cravens of the world to take it to another level, okay? so. I know some people, they need me. When an entrepreneur gets to a certain level, they gotta hire guys like me to take it to another level, okay? Know who you are. I learned there are growth stages, it's important to know, it's important to know where you fit. I don't fit in a zero to five million dollar company. That's an entrepreneur. That's risky. I got two little girls, I got a wife. I'm not putting up my house for capital, okay? It's just not me. It's okay. But I love meeting that $5 million company that's got so much potential. Great product, great passion, great marketing. I've got infrastructure I can bring to bear that'll help flow that guy from 5 to 15 to 20 to 30 to 60 to 100. My sweet spot, personally, is 10 to 100. At 100, now you're talking public, now you're talking dealing with a bunch of shareholders, now you're talking about, I like to know the employees' names. I like the fun of the buildup, okay? That's my sweet spot. There are other CEOs I know who would rather run a public company. They like the politics of it, they like the bigger scale of it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then I know a lot of entrepreneurs. All I'm saying is know that there are growth stages for these companies and figure out where you fit, all right? Figure it out. If you're not an entrepreneur, it's okay, but figure it out. I can tell you, uh, the entrepreneurs I know put it all on the line, and I know a lot who have failed, uh, but I know some who've been, I, I'm blessed to know a lot that, are, that have been very successful and it's been good for me in my development.